So there's another very important way that we can make esters from carboxylic acids. So we just talked about in the last video about the problem when we're trying to use nucleophiles um, under what amounts to a basic regime. Okay, so we have um, things that are that are too basic um, to uh, react with carboxylic acids by substitution. Instead, they just end up doing acid-base chemistry. Um, but the one way to get around that is to simply do um, acidic conditions. Okay, so if we're doing an acid regime, things are completely different because you're not going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. Um, and so for esterification, this is actually particularly important. And there's a, um, a reaction that's, that's very, very useful. Um, and it's called the, the Fischer esterification. Okay. And basically what uh, happens here is that we're going to take the carboxylic acid, uh, we're going to uh, put it in the presence of whatever alcohol we want, usually as the solvent, um, but certainly in, in a large excess. Um, and then we're just going to treat it with catalytic acid. Catalytic. And uh, for our purposes, we'll just use sulfuric acid. It, it could be any number of different things. Um, it's just what's important is that you have a, a reasonably strong proton around. Uh, so we'll just use sulfuric acid. And this is going to allow us to uh, convert the carboxylic acid into the ester. And then we'll get water as a byproduct. Now you'll notice that I put the, um, the uh, equilibrium arrows here because this is an absolutely reversible process. Um, and depending on the conditions you use, you can either get the uh, reaction to go forward to the ester, um, or if you put it into water, you can certainly get it to go back the other way. So we'll talk about both of those processes. Okay, so what is the mechanism of the Fischer esterification? Okay, so this, uh, this is going to be, look very familiar to you in many respects because it uh, looks a heck of a lot like the acetal formation mechanism, and it shares a lot of similarities with that, um, with that chemistry. So we have our carboxylic acid, right? And it's, as a neutral compound, it's not that electrophilic, but if we put a strong proton in its vicinity, we can uh, protonate that carbonyl, just like we did in the acetal formation. And this is going to get us to uh, this, this oxocarbenium ion. Okay, so of course now this is much more electrophilic, which means now we can engage our weak nucleophile, our neutral alcohol, in a nucleophilic attack. So we'll add to that carbonyl, that will get us to this tetrahedral intermediate. Okay. All right, and now uh, we just want to take care of that charge. So we will engage some base, and in this case, it'll just be the alcohol, um, and we'll deprotonate to get to a neutral species. Okay, so now we're at this tetrahedral intermediate. We actually have three oxygens attached to this one carbon. Um, so what we want to have happen to move forward is we want to eject one of these hydroxyl groups. We want to get one of these hydroxyls to leave. Uh, but remember that hydroxyl is not a good leaving group. And certainly once we're under these acidic conditions, we don't want to have OH minus leave. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to protonate one of these oxygens uh, to get it to leave. Again, very akin to the acetal formation mechanism. So it doesn't matter which one you protonate, um, they're, they're identical. And so we will get to this situation where we have H2O plus, and that's going to be the good leaving group. And so what we're gonna do then is to now allow that to leave. So we'll engage the OH lone pair, we'll push down and we'll eject the water, okay? And this then gets us to this, this intermediate, this oxocarbenium ion. And then the final thing to do is once again, deprotonate using a molecule of, of uh, alcohol. And then here we are, we have generated our ester. Okay. So yeah, you might, you might draw this out and uh, draw out the acetal formation mechanism and um, and just compare the two. 
um, and, and see what those look like. Or, or the hemiacetal formation uh, would, would I, I guess, be sufficient. And, and notice the, the similarities between these two. Protonate, add, deprotonate, protonate, eliminate, deprotonate. Okay, so it's, uh, it has a lot, a lot of similarities. While we're at this, I actually want to talk about the reverse mechanism under basic conditions, though. Okay, so uh, remember, we're, we're not going to go forward under basic conditions um, because of that deprotonation issue. But that doesn't mean that we actually can't come backwards. In fact, going backwards under basic conditions is actually really, really simple. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. Um, so we're going to do ester to, to acid under basic conditions. Okay, and so what we're going to uh, do here in general is we're going to take an ester um, and we're going to treat this with sodium hydroxide or some other hydroxide form. Um, and that's going to, that's going to regenerate um, our carboxylic acid um, and, our, and, and uh, the alcohol, that's this portion here. Now I say acid, under these conditions, you're, you're technically, technically going to have um, the the sodium carboxylate until you add some proton to, to protonate that. So technically this is the product. Um, and incidentally, this is a process that's known as saponification. Okay, so this is a very old process. This is basically how people used to make soap. So you take, um, again, animal fat uh, would be the common historical source, um, which is made up of all those triglycerides, those, those triester molecules. Um, and you would cook it up with lye um, which is basically just gets you to um, hydroxide solution. And that does this, this reaction and gives you a whole bunch of long chain fatty acid carboxylates. So the polar end and then a greasy end. And that's just basically soap. So this, this reaction is very important for that reason. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanism of this since it's uh, just slightly different. Um, so here we have our ester and we're dealing with hydroxide, so this is the base regime, right? So now in this case, this is just simply nucleophilic enough um, to, to do a direct substitution or direct addition to the carbonyl. Okay, so we'll get to this, this tetrahedral intermediate. And then in this case, it's actually very straightforward. Uh, we're just going to kick that O minus back down and eject the uh, ROH minus. So we'll do We'll do this, okay? Um, and then, right, you know, since we're we're dealing with only a small amount of the um, of the the substrate versus how much uh, hydroxide in it is in there, uh, we can basically assume that that hydroxide that was kicked off is going to grab the proton, and that will then give us as the as the intermediate our sodium carboxylate and. Uh, and the alcohol, uh, right? So, I mean, the, the point being here that the, the alkoxide is much more strongly basic than the carboxylate. So that, that equilibrium is what's going to uh, predominate. And then if you need the, um, the acid at the end of the day, you're just gonna work that up with, uh, with some HCl or, or what have you, and that can get you the neutral carboxylic acid, okay? So that's the Fischer esterification. And just to end off uh, this, this conversion of acids to esters, um, there's one final one. Uh, so we, um, we had the conversion to acid chloride and then to ester. We had the Fischer esterification, which was number two. And then the third uh, general way that you can do this is just to use SN2 chemistry. Um, this is a lot more limited in its scope, um, but it's certainly something you can think about. So what you're gonna do here is to generate the sodium carboxylate um, and there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, it doesn't require such a strong base, but that would be sufficient as well. Um, and what you're going to do then is, is to take that sodium carboxylate and then just basically engage it with an alkylating agent. So, for example, methyl iodide um, would certainly work. And then you can get to, you can get to your product there. Um, and, you know, to be, on the, to be honest, this is only going to work um, generally for... Um, primary uh, alkyl halides, right? So uh, methyl iodide, maybe ethyl iodide, um, uh, some other primary halide, or certainly uh, benzyl 
benzyl halides, allylic halides, things that are very activated. So it's more limited in scope, but it's a, another alternative to actually use the carboxylate as the nucleophile.